Another week down, so welcome to the J1 League Goal Zone Show. Strap on your boots as we take you around the footballing grounds of Japan's top flight. Some rearranged fixtures in midweek. The Marinos had been on a winning streak of late but only managed to draw against Tosu. Kobe continued their good run, topping Nagoya by a goal, and Tokyo went home with all three points. Round 20 brought about the return of the top of the table clash. This time, Kawasaki made the trip to Osaka for their showdown with Cerezo. Third place Tokyo were up against Shonan, while the Marinos welcomed Vissel Kobe to the fold. Consadole Sapporo haven't had much to show for their recent efforts. Lackadaisical in defence and passive in attack. This meant the door was open for Sendai to sneak some points in and some goals at the Sapporo Dome. Here's Patrick Kinghorn. Nice touch from Arano. That was good vision. And look at this. There's six red and black shirts forward here. Options galore out to the left of Fukumori. Can he deliver a good cross? He can. Can he find a teammate? He could. But Daiki Suga's header just over the bar. Nice build-up play from Sapporo. This game is looking open and attractive, isn't it? Kaneko over the top, looking for the player over on that far side and once again a promising move breaks down without Abata being forced into work. He might be forced into work here though, real opportunity and Anderson Lopez gives Sapporo the lead. When I say Sapporo, when they're good they can look brilliant, there's exhibit A. Of course the problem they got now is there's still 75 minutes for them to hold on to this lead but lovely work. You'll struggle to see a better team goal all weekend in J1 than the one Sapporo have given us to open up the scoring on match day 20. Fukumori with a lovely ball, Kaneko with a lovely header across, and Anderson Lopez, right place, right time. And Sapporo open the scoring, 25 minutes in. Hokkaido Consadale, Sapporo 1, Vegata Sendai nil. Arano looking for Kaneko again. This is almost identical to the first goal, and this could be the second! Saved by Abata. Well, that's a great save from the 18-year-old. Anderson Lopez, it was almost a carbon copy of the opening goal. It is going to be Para, and it's a decent save. There was nothing wrong with that free kick. There was plenty to like about Nakano's goalkeeping there. It's the closest sender I've come to a goal. Para's through, and Para with the shot, well saved by Nakano. Plenty of venom behind that, Para. He looks hungry for action. Today does Para. And he's won the ball back brilliantly there. Pull back, finish shot. Surely one all. And Sendai level it up right at the start of the second half. Suicidal defending from Sapporo. Alexander Guides, but I think you have to give a lot of credit to that goal to Para. He's been criticised in many quarters during this miserable Sendai run. But it was his hustle down the left-hand side, his work and some atrocious defending by Hokkaido Consolale Sapporo, which we've seen numerous times in recent weeks and months. Para, he's hungry to get involved. He wants a goal, I think, today, Para. Out to the left-hand side. Look how far forward he is for a fullback. And this is almost playing as an attacking midfielder, Para. At the moment, great cross, and they lead 2-1! And it's Guido's again! And they turn this game on its head inside the first five minutes of the second half. And once more, Sapporo shoot themselves in the foot. And whatever that man, Takashi Kiyama, said at half-time has done the trick. Guides with two in five minutes, Sapporo in disarray once again. Parrot involved to the left-hand side. To the byline, cross pin perfect, and Guides given the freedom of the Sapporo Dome on the edge of the six-yard box to bash it past the hapless Nakano. Guides waits. Flicked on, and it's three! Sendai have turned this game 180 degrees in the first 11 minutes of the second half. Nakano, no chance. Exposed by his defence once more. And it's raining the Galta Sendai goals here at the Sapporo Dome in the second stanza. Lovely glancing header on the run from Yashuhiro Hirioka with his first goal of the season. Intelligently worked free kick routine from Hamasaki. Yeah. 
Suga, decent cross, and they've got one of them back straight away. Addison Lopez has got a brace, and we've had five goals in less than an hour. Nice chest down from Addison Lopez in the initial build-up to this goal. Nice work on this near side from Suga. And Anderson Lopez, after Ogashiwa fell over, he managed to do enough to play it into the path of Lopez. And I suppose that will be an own goal, won't it? He fancy it was important. Sapporo got that second goal to get them back into it quickly. Here's Suga. They can't level this up at three or straight off the bat, can they? Oh, they can! Oh, my word, they scored again! Questions asked over the 18-year-old goalkeeper there, Yuma Rabata. And we're all tied at three each. There's still 30 minutes to play. Calculators at the ready because this scoring's not finished yet, I fancy. Still now to Fukai. They just need to get it clear one more time, Sendai, to get the final whistle. Another chance comes in. And that will be that. Well, referee Musakami blows for full time. It's finished here at the Sapporo Dome in the first J1 game of the weekend. Hokkaido Consadole Sapporo 3, Vegalta Sendai 3. A high stakes match on the line in Osaka. Cerezo with the short stack needed to go for broke here to prevent the leaders Kawasaki from running away with the championship. A huge three points up for grabs then, Shazad Hack calls this one. This is Morita, who will shield that back four. Yamane, deflection. Oh, and he had to get down quick there. Jin Hyun. It was Ianaga with the shot. That deflection looked like it might just be creeping in. He couldn't take a chance. Oh, the keeper had to tip over. Jungsun Ryong, their first chance. Bruno Mendes, who scored off a header last week. Different type this time. From top distance, trying to loop it over. Always going to be tough, as I said, against a, a tall keeper like Sun Ryong, who's 191 cm, 1.91. Way by Seko. That falls quite nicely. It's an own goal. Oh dear. Seko puts it into the zone net. And that is real frustration for Cerezo Osaka in one of the few attacks we've seen from Kawasaki in the last 15 minutes. Saito. Wakizaka, it's a good shot on the turn. Well held by Jin Hyun. Well worth the shot, that one. Oh, it's found its way in! Okuno with the header. He seemed to take an age, Jungsung Ryong, to get across. Matsuda with a beautiful ball in. And he's placed that excellently. So Kakitani there. Oh, great shot, and not for the first time, it's a tap-in from Leandro Damiel. What a shot that was. Well, there's absolutely no question of offside, no question of offside. Here's Mitoma, tight spaces. Trying to force his way through Yamane. They can't finish here, they do. And look who it is. The young man now has his ninth goal, Kaoru Mitoma. And it's all gone very, very wrong for Cerezo Saka. Two goals in as many minutes. And they were looking to try and put the pressure at the end. So many bodies in there. And you've got to give plenty of credit to the persistence of Yamane. Yanaga not taking the option to attack, just holds on to the ball. And there we have it. A big win for Kawasaki Frontale in more ways than one.
and Kawasaki will feel they've got one hand on the trophy. The final score, Cerezo Osaka one, Kawasaki Frontale three. Having lost to the other Yokohama outfit in the last round, Reisol will be sure to right the damage this time out, regardless of the target. And sure enough, within the first four minutes, a ball over the top from Cristiano finds a longer and he finishes tidily with his left foot. Looking to make amends just after the half-hour mark, Leandro Dominguez plays in Yuji Sanuma, but he can't quite take advantage of the defensive slip-up. Just before the break, Kashiwa almost went two up. Richardson with the volley from outside the box, turned away by Yuji Rokuta. Olunga was having a field day against a very pedestrian defence, but having got round the last man this time, his left-footed shot over the ball. Just one minute later though, at the other end of the field, Leandro Dominguez with a shot, tipped away by Kim seung Yu. Kashiwa would get their second goal just 14 minutes from time. Naoki Kawaguchi sending the ball through to Alunga, who again takes advantage of a static defence to score his 19th goal of the season. Clearly not Yokohama's best day at home, they conceded a third in time added on for stoppages. Hidakatsu Otani getting his head to the ball at the far post, but he didn't have many men close to him. Over in the west, San Frecce hosted Sagan after a painful loss at home in the previous round. Tosu did well to manage a draw in midweek and would be looking for something similar this time around. Inside the first 10 minutes and Shunki Higashi perhaps a little bit surprised to receive the ball at the far post, tipped over by Tatsuya Morita in goal. But 11 minutes later, San Frecce would get their first goal, courtesy of the ball being given away by the Sagan defence. Yuya Asano curling that one into the side netting at the far post. It was turning out to be a weekend of defensive frailty. Sagan losing the ball again, Higashi taking advantage. His defence may not have been the best, but Tatsuya Morita pulling off a fine save 10 minutes into the second half to deny Tsukasa Morishima. But from the resulting corner, even though Morita got down smartly to his left, he couldn't do anything to stop Toshihiro Aoyama from making it 3-0. And that's how the scoreline would remain until the end of the game, despite this effort in the 64th minute from Daichi Hayashi. When we come back, the J1 League Goal Zone show continues as we take you to Yokohama. The only place that brings you the goals and highlights from one of Asia's best football leagues. It's the J1 League Goal Zone Show. The Antlers' perfect September was foiled by Oita last weekend. They headed to Osaka for a chance to pick up the pieces, but Gamba were riding high on a three-game winning streak. 13 minutes into the game, Antakashi Usami with a good first touch, giving himself some room, but the shot saved by Yuya Oki. The latest in a league-wide series of poor defending saw Leo Silva steal the ball. He played in Everaldo, but he couldn't take advantage. Gamba's defence again shown to be a little weak. Six minutes into the second half, Juan Alano on one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. Sixty-six minutes in and Gamba on the breakaway. If there was contact between Patrick and the goalkeeper Yuya Oki, it was on the blind side of our camera. The referee thinks he saw some and that's a penalty kick. Patrick managed to pick himself up and slam that one straight down the middle. And in time added on for stoppages, Adam Milson has two men to pick out in the penalty area. He finds Kazuma Watanabe, and that's 2-0, the final score. 
Owita made the most of their September, collecting four wins out of their last five. Their opponent, however, registered only three points last month and had conceded the most goals in the league. Here's Shazad Hack. Forward by Iwata. Oh, great ball through. Can they finish off? It's a great goal. Slid in. On the counter-attack. Takazawa brought into the side today. He's the second highest scorer in the league, uh, in the team. And he scores his fifth goal this season. Lovely little layup here. Junior Dutra, that will make its way in. Excellent goal. And it has made a difference, that little drinks break. He just delayed his run, waited for that pass, that flick on from Carlinhos. And Junior Dutra scores his second goal of the season. There's Machida. It's a delightful ball over the top. Can they now finish? Surely! That's again off the woodwork, but not at the second time of asking. They finally have the lead they so richly deserve. And it's through Tanaka. They were almost lining up to put the ball in. Takazawa once again will be wondering how he couldn't score. But it's down this right-hand side. They have really caused problems. Keeper got something on it. Actually, it was the new man in, Nomura, with the header. They're sure that that should go their way. It doesn't matter, it's all academic. Oita Trinita have been good value today. Final score, Oita Trinita 2, Shimizu Elspas 1. Bottom of the J1 pile, Shonan hadn't had any good fortune recently on three straight losses. It would be a tough ask for the side to come up with the goods against visiting Tokyo. Not much action to speak of in the first half, but five minutes from time, a very strong run from Adialton left him with little energy for the final shot. 20 minutes into the second half, Kiichi Yajimo with a shot, pounded into the ground and into the goalkeeper's clutches, eventually. Still no goals, but no shortage of defensive comedy. 20 minutes from time, Shonan lose the ball, Kyosuke Tagawa heads wide. The only goal of the game came in the 78th minute. Tagawa finding a dialton, the goalkeeper getting a hand to it, but his wrists not strong enough. Kobe had seen a resurgence in form recently thanks to the magic of Andres Iniesta. They travelled to the home of the Marinos, the champions hitting a purple patch recently too unbeaten in their last five. Here's Shazad Haq. Oh, that is a great volley in. Edgar Junior. Well, the defence was completely lacking there. It's a very well executed goal. An early start here. Koike with the cross in. A wonderful finish, but no one around Ediga. That is beaten the offside trap. Douglas bearing down. Will he go for goal himself? He does, and he just about gets it in. He didn't mean to do that, but he will take the goal. He is furious again. Saw that from Ange Postecoglou against Sagan Tosu. That is clearly onside, but that high line once again. So badly exposed, Daigo Nishi's ball. Actually, to be fair, we're going to give Douglas Miller credit. He did strike the ball, but he did enough. Was that a foul? Referee points to the spot. Protests from Yokohama. All in vain. The referee didn't hesitate. He's not going to miss this time. 
So there they have the lead now. Vissa Kobe, three goals in 10 minutes. There's Douglas, and there's a lot of space here for Furuhashi. Waiting to shoot, Furuhashi! Oh, great individual goal! And the man who's on fire for Visokobe scores his 11th goal of the season and Kobe's third in this match. Remember, it was all Yokohama in the second half, but they left themselves once again exposed. And he's done brilliantly. Scored lots of goals in the lower leagues. Junior. Good save from Maikawa, still problems here. Can they finish off here? Yuki Otsu, a great save again from Maikawa. What a scramble this is, but they finally smash it in from an acute angle. He did everything he could, Maikawa. And are we gonna have a rip-roaring couple of minutes left? Koike gets Yokohama's second. The initial save was a decent one from Maikawa, but this one was excellent from Yuki Otsu. And a second and third one as well from him, but he could do nothing about that wonderful strike from Koike. Tiraton. Onaiwu. Ogihara. Last shot here! And it's into the hands. Maeda is gratefully grabbed on by Maikawa. And Visa Kobe hang on for the win. They're fourth in a row. Final score then is Yokohama F Marinos 2. This will Kobe 3. Nagoya made the trip to the Saitama Stadium to face the Reds. The hosts hadn't found a win at home in their last four, and star striker Leonardo had no goals to show for his efforts since August. And Nagoya almost added to their misery just four minutes in. Naoki Maeda with a very nice turn, but his shot across the face of the goal. Talk about nice turns, another one coming up. Shinzo Koroki responding to the dummy. His shot though saved by Langerak. Ten minutes from the half, Mateus with the curling free kick into the danger zone. Shusako Nishikawa in goal makes a double save. Little bit of good fortune, but still no goals. Five minutes from the break now and the ball will fall to Mu Kanazaki who tries from distance. Nishikawa saving again. When the goal came, it was a sweet one. Nagoya's Mateus with a weaving run on the left-hand side, chips it over to Mu Kanazaki, and that's 1-0. Urawa had nothing to offer in return, and when it looked as if Gabriel Xavier might make it 2-0, Thomas Deng brought him down with five minutes left and got an instant red card. Here's a roundup of the results for you. Consadole with a hard fought point at home coming back from 3-1 down. Cerezo couldn't keep the leaders in check, dropping a big three points in Osaka, while their local rivals Gamba continued their rich vein of form, knocking two past Kashima for the win. Three goals each for Raisol and Sam Frecce to pocket all points, and Kobe maintained their perfect start under new management, winning 3-2 against the Marinos. Kawasaki then taking their 18th victory and making it 56 points now, as Cerezo dropped to third after falling to another loss. Tokyo made the move into second position, trailing the leaders by 12 points. Gamba's fourth win in a row takes them into fifth, and Kobe make the jump back into the top half in ninth. Little change in the bottom half of the table, with the Reds dropping down after their third straight loss. Sendai earned a precious point away to help their thrust upwards, while the nightmare continues for Shimizu with their 15th loss of the season, the most in the league so far. That's the end of another edition of the J1 League Goal Zone Show. My name's Steve Dawson, and we'll see you next time.